We are here with uh, Kirsten Grant. Hello, thank you for joining us here a in pleasure. Vienna. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in the company. Okay, so I've worked at William Grant & Sons now for almost eight years. I started in the business um, in the UK. So I previously had worked in a UK distribution, drinks distribution company, Matthew Clark. So I was there for seven years. So before we go and work in the William Grant's business, we must do seven years outside of the business um, and be able to bring a skill set that is required by the business to add value. So we don't come ever come straight in from uni university. So um, I'd done seven years in sales and then, then in, in wine sales and then in some wine marketing. And then my uncle had asked me to join the William Grant's business. So started in the UK. 2012, um, um, looking after predominantly the on-premise strategy. And then I moved into um, a new part of the business that we'd set up, which um, distinguished the higher end of the on-premise and the independent spaces retail and um, various other areas, which focus more on the, the older rare and aged malts that we have at Glenfiddich. And then I um, moved to the USA uh, almost a year and a half ago now. I moved to New York um, to really understand our biggest market. So the USA is a th almost a third of our business. And so I asked my cousin if I could go and learn a bit more about USA business. So I spent six months in our head office in New York. Um, where we have a lot of our marketing is based there and, and sales, of course. And then subsequently I moved to Los Angeles a year ago now, um, where I've been learning more about the West Coast and other parts of the business. So traveling to a lot of the major markets, which would be Texas, I've been to Colorado, I've been to Florida many times, and then specifically California, which um, is our biggest market mm. in the US. So I currently live in Los Angeles. So you are known as a wine expert as well. How, how did it help you to go into the spirits business? Um, I think predominantly in the UK, for example, uh, the people who are buying wine are also buying spirits. So your customers are the same people. So when I left the Matthew Clark business and went into to William Grant's, I took a lot of the customers with me. So they were... Um, you know, I, I went back and said, oh, I'm now selling spirits for the family. And a lot of them said, we always knew you would do that, Kristen. <laughs> so, yeah, the, whilst the people who make and sell wine are, can be quite different to the people who make and sell spirits, the customers are the same. Mm. You have the job title of commercial uh, strategy? Yeah, commercial okay. strategy. That means you have to look at, uh, ahead in time. Yes. What will be happening with, yeah. with the market? What, yeah. what are your views on the market, on the whiskey market? Do you see uh, a steady up price still? Or? Yeah, well, what we see generally, and I believe will continue to happen, is the, the less but better philosophy. So people are drinking a bit less, but they're drinking better quality. And that sits perfectly for a company like William Grant & Sons, as we are a premium spirits business. Mm. So. Um, we're quite happy that this is will be an ongoing trend, we believe. And people are uh, specifically mu much more knowledgeable about products and eager to be uh, taught and eager to learn about um, what it is that they're drinking and where it's come from and how it's made. You know, does it have, you know, what is the history of this product? What is the provenance of the product? These are big big areas for consumers these days and you know we're lucky at William Grant and Sons that we have a lot to say in these areas we have a rich history uh, we believe wholeheartedly in quality uh, we do not like to skip any quality cues we are you know passionate as a family that what we bring to market mm. is exactly how we want it to be so so being the number one single malt of the world and being someone obsessed by quality. How does this go together? Doesn't it, uh, it seems to me that being big and, and quality do contrast or don't they? 
A hundred percent no, because um, if you ever get the chance to visit Glenfiddich um, or our other distillery nearby, Balvenie, you'll understand what we mean by that. And being a family business, having been in this business, we're 132 years this year, and it allows us um, to do what we want to do fundamentally. So, uh, you know, we're still 100% owned by the family. Um, we have no outside shareholders and we still operate the business. So we answer to ourselves and it, this gives us the advantage that, you know, we can make the decisions that we want to make. And my family always have done and always will do believe in making whiskey of the highest quality. Mm -hmm. So we don't cut corners, we don't need to. Um, every decision that we make is made for the longer term. You know, we're thinking 20, 30, 40, 50 year planning cycles. We're not thinking about the next quarter. So for a shareholder payout or any of this stuff, we just don't operate like that. So, you know, this is evident when you look at what we've done, you know, over the years, but also what we're continuing to do with the expansion of Glenfiddich. If you can go and see that, it's really quite impressive. You know, we've not cut a single corner there for sure. And, you know, when we built the Tullamore Dew Distillery, we spent a lot of time wondering how to future proof it for quality reasons. So, you know, it's that freedom that of answering to ourselves that allows us to make a lot of decisions that might not seem obvious to the outside world, but are obvious to us for the mm. future. And as far as I know, you do a lot of those things that guarantee quality in-house, like yeah. having your own cooperage, yep. having your own coppersmiths. Yeah. Uh, that's important to you as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's super important. I mean, what we really believe is controlling or a bit control, we, look, we like to be in control. So, you know, controlling the process from beginning to end is super important to us. So, you know, we were the first distillery ever to have a full-time on-site coppersmith. I mean, that was um, unusual when we first did this. And then, you know, having our own cooperage really allows us to control the wood quality, which we believe to be one of, one of the most important aspects of quality whiskey making. So if we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to claim that you know quality was something that we really believed in and to see and uh, taste this quality we will now do two tastings okay one of the fire yeah. and cane and one of uh, an old expression and for now thank you for the interview thank you very my much. my pleasure <laughs>